Good morning, it's David Wegener here. It's the 21st of May 2017, Sunday. It's approaching 9am on my um, on my PC and my watch. So it's about five minutes away from 9am. Okay, so with, without further ado I say, um, other people say that too, without further ado, here comes the game. Now what have I got for you today? Right, I'm not going to try to pronounce this person who is white's name at all. It's just going to be impossible. I can spell it, but I'm not going to spell it. I'm not going to try to say it. It's A W and then the name is, it's like my name, but some people will say my name's really easy and uh, a friend of mine, he's, he did it really easily without any issue. He just said my whole name, blah, blah, blah. And he hasn't seen my name written for a long, long time. So anyway, it's W J A K H I R E F F. So I don't know how to say that. That's W J A K H I R E F F. And this is a correspondence game that happened that happened a uh, hundred a hundred and eleven uh, nine years ago, hundred and nine years ago, nineteen oh eight in Russia. And this was a correspondence game between White and um, Alexander Alekhine at the age of sixteen. Alekhine was um, sixteen when he played this game. Now I looked at this game on the 18th of December, one week before Christmas of course, in 1980. A long time ago. So let's remember, Alakine is only 16, only 16, but he he's only 16, okay? So it's probably going to be quite easy, eh? Bishop c4. Knight c6. d3. Bishop b4. Knight e2. Not knight c e2 because it's impossible because of the pin on the, the knight. But anyway, so they go knight to king two in the book. D5. A typical move for Alakine to play. And remember, this is correspondence chess now. A correspondence game. I'm not exactly sure how that came about. Whether they had some horses running backwards and forwards. Whether they had some horses going trunging trundling across the the meadows to the next um, town or wherever because I'm not actually sure how they um, whether, or, whether or not they were in the same city or whatever they might just have had a, a courier like um, Forrest Gump or some of like that Forrest Gump might have been running around and um, delivering delivering the correspondence games now he would make, come to think of it, he would make quite a good Gary Kasparov. If anyone was to do Gary Kasparov, he would be quite good as an actor for Gary Kasparov. Because he's, he's, got, he's got sort of like um, the features that I would... Anyway, I'm not going to talk about um, movies and all that sort of thing, but I did see, I've now watched Hidden Figures now, three times and I think it's an awesome movie but I'm not doing that I'm going to continue with this game D5 E D5 Knight D5 Bishop takes D5 
e5 and then we've got queen takes you see because this is not possible it looks like it is but it isn't because it's check okay so then white castles away very well done they're developing well they're not developing but they're getting their rook almost connected to the other rook and they're getting the king away but it's not actually a developing move but it does aid with development and at the same time it's threatening now white threatens to take the queen on d5 back goes Alcoran to d8 but surprising but there are other moves but on but this is what the great Alcoran plays knight g3 now Alcoran castles so this knight's move two moves so it sort of helps black a little bit with regards to moving the queen from here to here which is also done in the center counter gambit as I showed the other day knight g3 castles then we have f4 and Alkine plays the same move opposing f5 and then we've got this queen's knight to king 2 or knight c to e3 e2 knight c to e2 not knight g to e2 but knight c to e2 now if, it, if this knight went back here it would look a bit odd because you just moved it from here to here and back here again it looks a bit silly do you not know what you're actually doing and you can actually tell sometimes your opponent will play like that your opponent will play in such a way that you think they don't know what they're, they're up to. They're playing this, and then they're going back there again, and then they're going there again, and then they're going back to where they were before, blah, blah, blah. And you sit there and go, well, they don't actually have a plan. And it's no good in chess not to have a plan. It doesn't matter if your plans are, are, are bad plans, better than no plan at all. It's sort of like a, a bit of a cliche or a little bit of a sort of um, statement to make. Um, maybe in practice it's not completely true, but a, a bad plan is better than no plan at all. Now that's not to say that the plans that's bad is going to work, <clears throat> but it's important to have a plan. Um, in chess. Now a plan could be just like uh, I'm going to march these pawns up here as far as they can go blah 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 I'm going to put a uh, I'm going to position my knight here not that I'm talking about this position and I'm going to support that with my rook here rook a d8 and so on. So anyway we've got um, and and it can be sort of like it's not analysed completely out a plan but it's it's generally what you got where you're going to operate and what part of the board you're going to try to influence and it might be just a plan to defend because you might have a position that has to be defended so we're back to the game black has just played the aggressive looking queen h4 which enters into white's camp because this is the centre line here and white has just had an intrusion by a black piece the queen in this case to h4 which is in their campsite sort of thing it's only a couple of squares away from the king isn't it so black sort of entered into white's camp so it can frazzle the troops. It's just like throwing um, it's just like throwing a fox or so equivalent or even a dog into a chicken coop. Now here we got 
bishop g6. And here, yay, what's white done? They've put this pawn on the black square, black square. So here comes Alakine, he goes e4, e4. Thereby, this is still able to be activated. As the bishop can come here, here and here, and that sort of thing. Now that's a small sort of a plan, it's not a plan. But this black square bishop can go on this diagonal if this pawn pushes. C4. Now we've just got the heinous attack. The rook h6 just threatening this. But what after? So once the rook goes here, what after h3? What happens after that? Because h3 will um, save, save white. But being Alakine, he goes there, he's the aggressor here. h3. Bishop f8. Fair enough. Queen b3 check. Here comes white. King h8. Off to the side cushion. Queen two c three. It actually says it's a bit naughty. It says queen to bishop three. Okay, it says queen to bishop three. It's a bit naughty. It's a bit mis of a mistake to say that because white can go to the other bishop three, can't they? Okay, we're not going to play that for. We don't believe that that would be a game. They would put in the golden treasury of chess book if white here played queen here it would be stupid because you just take it obviously and so that's not going to happen so they go queen c3 or queen to bishop 3 in this case and that's offering black the opportunity to block this pawn on d5 and to be able to position a, a knight there. So they go knight. Uh, Alakine went knight e7. And remember, he's only 16. Only 16. Knight e7. Bishop to king 3. Now remember what I said about the, the black squared bishop here for white. It's not very good because of moving this pawn to d4 and I said hey look at what's happening here punters now white's actually being met by black um, administering attack on the square here d5 so white can still play it but loses the pawn to either knight takes or bishop takes and can bolster this up with a pawn here once they take, if they do. And so, and this bishop that I'm talking about here, this is my or black's um, bad bishop, but it's better than white's bad bishop, which they've only got one bishop as opposed to they've got two knights and black's got one knight. And this is a fair enough a move because it sort of threatens this. So black takes off. There's no there's no rush, you know. If he if black's stubborn enough, then they and keep their queen there they offer white the opportunity to take this or to take this which wins 
this rook on h6 once the queen moves because the queen's not going to want to hang around there because it's um, got lots and lots of fire hitting it. So we've got queen f6. A3. What's that got to do with it? What the heck? What's that got to do with it? Bishop d5. Now this bishop's entering into the fray. It's actually it could actually play threaten this and rook h3 check because the bishop once the pawn takes once the bishop takes the pawn white would be met by rook h3 and the pawn can't take back because the bishop prevents it with check so that's sort of what Alakine's up to in my feeble attempt to explain the great master but anyway um, the player that's unpronounceable name um, has just played a3 now it sort of looks a little bit odd um, oh I know what I'll do um, White's possibly saying I'm going to start marching my my pawns on the queen's side over here because it might look all safe but I don't understand it it looks just a bit odd. So bishop comes back to e3 again. And what did I say earlier? About if your opponent just plays moves and it looks like, um, it just looks like they're repeating moves, sometimes it can make one think that they don't have a plan. And they're just willy nilly in. Willy nilly in means to just move backwards and forwards and not have any constructive um, ideas or whatever. As in, in chess, it's the same. So if you just do nothing, you get yourself in some bother. Knight g6. b4. See, so he's decided, White's decided in his infinite wisdom to launch a queenside massacre and um, true to Alakine's word he continues on as well he doesn't sort of pull back here other than moving this bishop back here and that sort of thing King G1 now it's gone Waste a bit of time here, eh? Knight f3 comes. Now, if here, then this is going to be a very, very strong attack for black. Because, one, the knight is attacked. The rook doesn't want to take this. Because it's just bishop takes. Yeah, bishop takes f3 rook and also once this knight moves this queen can swing into here or the rook can come here but this one looks very strong so let's say this has happened we'll just do this real quickly queen here let's say white plays knight takes rook here I mean knight takes f5 threatening um, the rook and the queen at the same time what would be merely met by this with best play and if now knight h6 everyone can see that this is queen g2 checkmate now even this is just about good but it fails now if there was a pawn here if the black pawn was here, that's checkmate, see? So that'd be quite cute. But anyway, it's not the position. Knight f3 check. King f2. Oops, we've done. Got to go. King f2. 
Right. Queen H4. She's back. Honey, I'm home. Sinclair, get in there, Sinclair. Anyway, pawn to b5. And pawn to knight 5. See, the thing is, is black can just about ignore what white's doing over here because, okay, I'm not saying that white isn't doing anything now, but the operations are really going on around here. They didn't really defend very well. They just sort of um, kind of ignored their king in the old days. It says kings rocked, kings rocked to bishop one, or it could say kings rocked to king one, or kings rocked to queen one, or kings rocked to knight one. But in this place, it would have to say kings rock to knight, queen's knight one, okay? If it was going there. If it goes here, it just goes rock to knight one in the old notation or rook to rook one, because there's only one rook that can go to, um, oh, hold on, yeah, no, it's blur. then you have to say, um, if it's rook to knight one, you have to decide whether or not you're moving to here or not, or there, or whether that's moving there or not. So you would say king's rook to king's knight one, or king's rook to Queen knight one, and so forth. So anyway, they go kings rook to bishop one. You see, that's why I'm telling you all that sort of stuff. Now comes the bishop. Now the bishop's been um, sleeping a little bit, so out comes the bishop. So it's coming into activity again. Okay, the status quo is um, wanting to look after, you, defend your position, your own king, and that sort of thing. And then as well as that have some influence in attack as well. Bishop e7. Very, very aggressive is our um, alakine. Or have that, they say. Because the resulting position is going to be um, quite cool. Knight g3. Oops, so we're not doing that computer. We're doing knight g3. Queen takes knight. Queen g3. Now we've got bishop f2. Now the thing is, is that we could look at this for everyone. Now what one's worse, Dave, is that better? Not even sure, um, that looks quite good eh? Now if King can go here, So you can have a lot of playing around with the king. And that's the thing. See, black can just about play that, I think. And just play that if they wanted to. So that's quite fun. Oh, where were we up to now? Got quite confused in there. 
könnte. Bishop F2, Queen H2. Oh dear. Now, what could be met by this check? And if Queen takes C4, Knight D2 wins the Queen with the fork on D2, Knight takes C4. So, white relinquishes black's knight on f3 because it's too nasty there. And alkyne just merely takes back the pawn. Rook to c2. Look, Alkine just plays Rook E8. It's looking like he's not even panicking or he hasn't even sacrificed anything. Bishop E3. Queen H1. Check. Bishop to Knight 1. What else? If King F2. Okay, threatens the rock, um, threatens the queen, of course. So they can't go there. Oh, hey, that's no good. They go bishop g1. And then comes, look, he's not even, it's like he's not even panicking. He's not panicking, and now he's threatening chomp checkmate after the next move of the rock and so what's threatened with queen h3 check okay and after the rook can only go there to g2 the queen can offer herself up by the way I'll just show you what I'm talking about she can offer herself up for free because black's going to win the white king with checkmate on the spot. Okay, so that's no good. So that's what white is threatened with. So they go rook to king's rook to it says. And not rook to queen's rook two, because if it says rook to queen's rook two, there would be two rooks that can move there, as I've just said. So they go rook h two. Now I'm just going to leave it for I don't know quarter of a minute. Can you find? Checkmate and two moves for black forced. Now I will give you a clue. If this pawn, if this hook wasn't here, this would be a pawn on here would be checkmate, wouldn't it? So if the rook wasn't able to take it, it would be checkmate, wouldn't it? So that's the clue. This is no good. Because white would suddenly be winning, even though black's got some pretty menacing pawns. Black played Queen G2. Check. And now, what can white do? 
can't move the king because it checks everywhere. There's fireworks happening, like huge fireworks happening around White's king. So the only move here is this queen is protected, so it can't take the king can't take it. Can't put something in the way, as usually you can put something in the way of check. But when it's abreast to the king, the opposing piece, you can't put something in the way. So you can either take it or move out the way. And in this case, white can't move out the way, so they take the queen and then it's... And that's the end of the session. Thank you very much. I hope you have a pleasant day wherever you are looking at me from and thank you very much for um, having a look at this great master game this world champion of the future when he's 16 years old <laughs>